G'day guys, Morsi here. Welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Auto Portal Network System. I've got a bit of a demonstration for you and then a tutorial on how to build it. So this design is inspired by Etho from Etho's lab and his work in Nether Portals. And it's also a continuation on an older video that I made on the same topic. So what we've got here is a junction and this junction has four different directions we can travel in. Each of these directions has about 2,000 block range. Now you can expand that, so you could go 5,000, 10,000 or more, um, but for now we're just going to do 2,000 blocks. So what I'm going to do is travel in one of these directions in about a minute and I'll go for 2,000 blocks. So the first thing we have to do is go through one of these portals, any one is fine. When we go through to the nether, we'll end up at the central station. So here we are at the central station. This station is the main home portal, so this is where all those junction portals will go to. And from here we can select which way we want to go. So if we want to go to Lapis, that's in that direction, all we have to do is disable this portal and re-enable it and stand in the portal. Now when we come through, we'll be back at the junction and at this point we walk through the portal which we want to go to. So let's go through the Lapis portal and instead of coming out at Central Station, we'll now come out at Lapis Station number one. As you can see, let's keep going, disable, and re-enable and stand in the portal. And when we come out, you'll see that we are already a thousand blocks away. There we go, 998. And let's go back through again. And instead of coming out at Lapis Station number one or Central Station, we'll actually come out at Lapis Station number two. Let's go through here again, and when we come out, we are now 2,000 blocks away from where we started in under a minute, and there's a nice ocean monument as well. So this is a, not a, a new idea using portal for travel, but the cool thing is that you can pick which direction you want to go, and you could essentially set up a whole network of these portals to get to you to wherever you want to be. Okay guys, so we're done there at the underwater monument. So we're here at Lapis Station number two and we want to get back to Central Station. So to do that, all we have to do is disable this portal and re-enable. And we'll come out at the ocean monument, which it is over there and all we have to do is go back through and instead of coming out at station number two we'll come out at Lapis station number one and then we hit this one again here and we re-enable and step back in again we'll go through, we'll end up at Lapis station number one in the overworld which is a thousand blocks away if we go back through here again Instead of getting to Lapis Station number one, we'll end up at the Central Station. There we go. So that was a bit of a demonstration of a single junction network system. But to make it a true network, what you could do is copy this junction and put it at Lapis Station number one, which is about a thousand blocks in that direction. And you could copy it. Oh, actually, Lapis Station number one's a thousand blocks in that direction. You could copy it, put it over at gold, diamond, and emerald. And when you came out at that area, you could connect these up. So you could actually, for example, you could start here. You could go to uh, a thousand blocks ahead to this junction. But then you could go over to this side, to this junction. And then you could go back here to this junction. And then back to the starting one. So you could truly make a grid pattern of these junctions. Um, now a couple of important things is you have to watch the render distance that you have. I've got mine set relatively high. Um, I've got it set to 20 chunks. Um, when you're in the nether you need to make sure that the portals that you create are within render distance and also they have to marry up to some portals on the overworld. So I set my portals up at a thousand blocks away, therefore in the nether they're approximately 125 blocks apart. So keep that in mind. So this particular design is, is intended to be used in the overworld to travel large distances. 
However, if we change the way the design works and flip it around so that the portal network systems are in the overworld and the regular portal is in the nether, we get a local travel option where we can travel to multiple portals in a small area. And to show that, I'm just going to jump over to my survival let's play. Okay, so anyone familiar with my let's play, uh, that is my mob spawner up the top there. And we've got our little shack here. Now if we go down here, we can see that there is one of these portal systems ready to go. So let's disable and re-enable. Now the difference with this system is it's all running off the same nether portal. So when we come through to the nether, it is exactly the same portal we use every time. And what that means is it will only do local area transport. So next we'll come out at my skeleton spawner which is down in the ground. And if we go back through again, disable and re-enable. We'll go back through to the nether. Again we'll come to the same nether portal in the nether. This one. And when we go back through we will end up up at my mob spawner. Right at the top. So that's where we started down there. So a pretty cool little system you can use um, and it's really useful to get around quickly and I will be implementing the network system in this world when I get some more resources together and I think it's certainly better than just running rail lines because it's a lot more resource friendly. Okay so here is one of the systems in the flesh and what we've got is a 5x5 five by, five, uh, by 6 if you include this block on the top um, system. Now we've got some dispensers which will activate and deactivate, uh, two for activating, one for deactivating and the final dispenser is four potions if you wish. And uh, let's take a look how to build this thing. Okay guys, to make one of these portal network nodes all we have to do is make a 3x3 portal and put buttons on the side which you want to use for controls, so I'll put it there. On the opposite corner you break out that block come around the corner and put two blocks with a repeater on the end set to four and a piece of redstone. Put another piece of redstone here with another repeater set to four into another block and a block above that piece of redstone. Put another repeater on the other side set to four into a block with another repeater set to three. That'll go into a block with a torch on the side and a torch coming off the back of the portal. Get a block on top of that torch and then extend a line of blocks out like this and put a block at the end. From here get two repeaters, one here and one here and put a piece of redstone, set them both to four. Above this block put a piece of obsidian or something similar and put it at the top. Break this one and put a comparator. Once you've done that put another repeater here, set that to four and then put a torch on the side of this block with a block on top. Put a piece of redstone on top of that block and then another block even higher still with another redstone torch on that side. Bring the blocks out by three to here and then put a sticky piston on the end and put a block on top of that. Then put another block on the other side and then we'll get two repeaters and set them to four and we'll put a dot of redstone there. We'll put a block here and we'll put a block here and one more here and one there. Here we'll put a repeater set to two and here we'll put a repeater set to four. We'll put another block at the end of this repeater and another block at the end of this repeater and then we'll put one more block right in here like that. We'll put a dot of redstone on that block and then we'll put one more block on the back here like this with a repeater with no delay. On the other side here we'll put a torch and that will cycle through this system like that. Once we've done that let's put a block here with a block on top and put a dispenser right in the middle right at the top to the right 
and to the left. Okay, let's fill in the rest of these blocks. Okay, now we want to get a bucket of lava or water, depending if you're in the nether or the overworld. Put that in the top dispenser. We'll put flint and steel in the two dispensers to the right and to the bottom. And the last one, you can put potions if you like. If we do splash potion of fire resistance, that's a good one. And we'll put that in there. Next, we want to put the timer on. So to do that, we'll get a sticky piston and face it out from this block right here. We'll do another one and face it out from this block right here, from this redstone line, out like that. We'll put a block underneath that piston and a block there with a comparator on it facing into that block. Then we'll get a slime block. We'll put a slime block on this piston and then we'll get a redstone block and put a redstone block here. Next we'll get some hoppers and we'll put a hopper here and one here. Make sure they're facing into each other and in those hoppers put a stack of items. Once you've done that we should be right to test it. So let's break this portal and give it a go. So if we hit this button water should be dispensed quickly. In this case lava. If we hit this button, we should activate, and then it shoots out a, a potion, and then the lava breaks it. The timer has started, and once the timer finishes, it will reset itself, and it will turn the portal back on. Okay, so let's give these two portals a quick test. We've got one on the diamond side, one on the lapis side. So if we jump up here and disable this portal, we will re-enable it and stand in the portal. We'll go through to the nether. And while we're in the nether, we'll go back through again. Now the other side, the portal that we went through was disabled. So when it looks for a new portal to connect to, it goes to the next available portal, which is the Lapis one. If we watch in a second, that portal turned back on and now we could actually go back to that portal if we wanted to. Okay, so how does this part of the system work? Well basically the portals at each end are positioned just so that this portal here is the closest portal to the diamond portal. This portal here is the closest portal to the gold portal and so on. So because they're staggered away from each other, depending on which one we go on to, determines which direction we actually warp to. So it's important to remember that you need to have these within range of each portal and that if you're going to put these all over your world they have to be exactly precise in the right places. In this situation I've got them 1000 blocks apart. So 1000 blocks over there and the next one is 1000 blocks as well. And from the center here, from 0, 0, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blocks. So including the center, it's actually 17 blocks between this portal and that portal, which means they're on op um, separate chunks. So because they're on separate chunks, there won't be any confusion. All right, well, that's all for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I will provide this world in the description for download. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to jump on and follow me on Twitter. Um, subscribe on YouTube if you want to see more cool videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. G'day guys, Morsey here. Welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Auto Portal Network system. I've got a bit of a demonstration for you and then a tutorial on how to build it. So this design is inspired by Etho from Etho's lab and his work in nether portals and it's also a continuation on an older video that I made on the same topic. So what we've got here is a junction and this junction has four different directions we can travel in. Each of these directions has about 2000 block range. Now you can expand that so you could go 5000, 10000 or more 
uh, but for now we're just going to do 2,000 blocks. So what I'm going to do is travel in one of these directions in about a minute and I'll go for 2,000 blocks. So the first thing we have to do is go through one of these portals, any one is fine. When we go through to the nether we'll end up at the central station. So here we are at the central station. This station is the main home portal, so this is where all those junction portals will go to. And from here we can select which way we want to go. So if we want to go to Lapis, that's in that direction, all we have to do is disable this portal and re-enable it and stand in the portal. Now when we come through, we'll be back at the junction and at this point we walk through the portal which we want to go to. So let's go through the Lapis portal and instead of coming out at Central Station, we'll now come out at Lapis Station number one. As you can see, let's keep going disable and re-enable and stand in the portal and when we come out you'll see that we are already a thousand blocks away there we go 998 and let's go back through again and instead of coming out at lapis station number one or central station we'll actually come out at lapis station number two let's go through here again you could go back here to this junction and then back to the starting one so you could truly make a grid pattern of these junctions. Um, now a couple of important things is you have to watch the render distance that you have. I've got mine set relatively high. Um, I've got it set to 20 chunks. Um, when you're in the nether you need to make sure that the portals that you create are within render distance and also they have to marry up to some portals on the overworld. So I set my portals up at a thousand blocks away, therefore in the nether they're approximately 125 blocks apart. So keep that in mind. So this particular design is, is intended to be used in the overworld to travel large distances. However, if we change the way the design works and flip it around so that the portal network systems are in the overworld and the regular portal is in the nether, we get a local travel option where we can travel to multiple portals in a small area and to show and we re-enable and step back in again we'll go through we'll end up at lapis station number one in the overworld which is a thousand blocks away if we go back through here again instead of getting to lapis station number one we'll end up at the central station there we go so that was a bit of a demonstration of a single junction network system but to make it a true network what you could do is copy this junction and put it at lapis station number one which is uh, about a thousand blocks in that direction and you could copy it or well, actually lapis station number one is a thousand blocks in that direction you could copy it put it over at gold diamond and emerald and when you came out at that area you could connect these up so you could actually for example you could start here you could go to uh, a thousand blocks ahead to this junction but then you could go over to this side to this junction and then and when we come out we are now 2,000 blocks away from where we started in under a minute and there's a nice ocean monument as well so this is a not a, a new idea using portal for travel but the cool thing is that you can pick which direction you want to go and you could essentially set up a whole network of these portals to get to you to wherever you want to be okay guys so we're done there at the underwater monument so we're here at lapis station number two and we want to get back to central station so to do that all we have to do is disable this portal and re-enable and we'll come out at the ocean monument which it is over there and all we have to do is go back through and instead of coming out at station number two We'll come out at lapis station number one and then we hit this one again here 